Hi everyone, I'm Louise and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I feel like a lot of these videos start off in a similar way, but this video is pretty highly requested. So I thought I should make a video on the stats and extracurriculars that helped me get into my dream school or any other top 20 schools. I thought this video might help any seniors applying this year or any other high schoolers applying in the next few years. And if you haven't watched my college decisions reactions video, one of these corners, I think it's this corner, um, go watch to see which schools I got rejected from and also schools that I got accepted into. <laughs> I almost knocked over a plant. So I wanna put it out there to try not to compare yourself to any of these stats videos because I've also watched many of them throughout high school and I know how it feels. I also used to compare myself to them. But just try your best to not compare because everyone's different and there's not one single applicant that colleges look for. And also I'm not a college admissions officer so these are just the tips that I learned while applying to colleges as well as some tips that I wish I knew prior to applying. And then also make sure to stay to the end for a Google spreadsheet that helped me stay organized. Um, also to like keep track of everything that was going on. And then lastly, if you see me looking down, I have my laptop because I have some notes that I want to make sure I hit. All right, so first the basics, um, my demographics. So I'm an Asian female. I can speak, read and write English and Mandarin. My first language wasn't English. It was actually a dialect, but that wasn't an option, so I wrote Mandarin. Neither of my parents attended high school or college, so I applied as a first-gen college student. I also grew up in Louisiana and went to public magnet school from second to 12th grade. Okay, the stats, which is why most of y'all are here. Um, just a heads up, my stats aren't like the best. I would say my GPA is like higher, but my like standardized tests, you'll, you'll see for yourself. Okay, so as for GPA, my unweighted GPA was a 4.0, and at the time of applying, my weighted GPA was a 4.8846. For rank, I was ranked first out of 125 students. For APs, I took a total of 8 AP classes, a total of 10 AP exams, which means I self-studied for two. And then also for APs, I just say like, take the hardest classes that your school offers um, and also make sure they like apply to the major that you want to apply to. So like for example, you don't have to self-study, but my school didn't offer like a lot of business or like economics related courses. So that's why I self-studied for, oh, I didn't write it, but that's why I self-studied for macroeconomics and my other self-studied AP was AP Chinese. Um, I think the main thing is just like not overload yourself because I took five AP exams my junior year worst mistake ever do not do that studying for those five exams was bad enough <laughs> okay so i only submitted five ap scores i didn't submit anything below a four uh ap bio i got a four ap psych i got a four ap macroeconomics four ap chinese five and ap stats five and then on common app it gives you the option for which ap exams you're taking you're planning to take that senior year so I wrote AP Calc AB, AP Environmental Science, and AP English Literature. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over the classes that I took throughout my high school years. Okay, so for eighth grade, I wrote that I took Algebra 1 Honors, and then also, I don't know if I wrote English 1 Honors, but I also took that eighth grade. So most of my classes are Honors because that's just how my school works. And so I'm not gonna say honors, but I'll like write them on the screen if they are. So ninth grade, I took World Geography Gifted, English 2 Gifted, Geometry, Geometry Honors, uh, Bio 1, Spanish 1, Spanish 2, and Talented Music 1, which was not honors. 10th grade, I took Civics, English 3 Gifted, Algebra 2, AP Computer Science Principles, AP Psych, and Chemistry. Oh, and Spanish 3. And then junior year, I took, okay, so for the two semester courses, my school writes it as like a nickname for the first semester. So I'm just gonna say like the year long courses. So AP US History, which was a full year course, English 4 Gifted, 
Advanced Math Pre-Calc, which was just Pre-Calc, um, AP Probability and Statistics, AP Biology, and that was a year-long course, so Bio 2 was the first semester. Okay, my senior year courses, um, I took AP English Lit, which was a full year course, AP Calc, full year, but it was AB, um, AP Environmental Science, and then I took two dual enrollment courses, um, which was Human Biology for non-science majors, and then I took Physics. Okay, on to ACT. So I never took the SAT, so I'm not going to talk about that because ACT is like more popular in the South. Um, so I took my first ACT, I want to say sophomore year. Um, COVID hit the second semester of my freshman year, so I spent most of quarantine like doing practice ACTs. So I took it multiple times. I want to say like eight times, which is so bad, but like I couldn't get the score that I wanted. My super score was like fine. Like it wasn't the best, but it was all right because most of my schools accept super score. So that's just what I submitted. So I submitted a super score of 33 to all of my schools, except for UCs because they don't accept ACC, their test line. So the breakdown was math 36, science 34, English 33, reading was a 28, and writing was an 8. So the main reason I kept on retaking the ACT was to bring up the reading score, which kind of happened. Um, still wasn't the highest, but I mean, it's fine where it is now. So my highest composite was a 31. Same breakdowns for math, science, and English, 36, 34, and 33. My reading was a 21. Now you all see why I took it many times. So, yeah. So that kind of just shows that scores aren't everything. I mean, like, obviously try to get high scores, but if you don't have like a perfect ACT or like perfect GPA, like it's fine. There's so many people out there applying with perfect ACTs or SATs, uh, but that doesn't like define your entire application. Okay, I need to move this plant. Okay, now onto my honors and awards. Um, so for Common App, they allow you to put five. And for the UC application, it's I think 20, but it's like a combination of honors and extracurriculars. So I'm just gonna go through like what I put on each. So for Common App, first I put Miss Dance of Dixie, one against dancers from Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama after three stages, went to nationals. So Miss Dance was like kind of like a dance pageant. Um, there's three stages, like I said, there's the interview, uh, audition classes in like five different styles. And then also, oh, this is two years ago. Uh, oh, and then your like solo performance. Basically I won against dancers from all three states. And then I went on to compete for Miss Dance of America. Um, later that summer. Basically that was during my sophomore year and I think my personal statement was somewhat about that. Not like about it, but it included it in some parts. So it was like a pretty big moment in my life. All right, second, I put, I placed second place in a Charleston International Music Competition for piano. Um, it was an international competition and I won it junior year, I think with Flight of the Bumblebee. I think the video is also on my YouTube. It wasn't even like that good of a video, but yeah there's that all right third i put first place state science olympiad experimental design um it was for state slash regional like the what's the word the level of recognition yes um so it was state slash regional and i won it during my junior year fourth uh first place piano state louisiana federation of music clubs division very difficult um, again, it was a state competition, so I wrote state slash regional, and also my junior year. And then fifth, I put first place dance solo, high school division. It was a regional competition, so I wrote state slash regional, um, and I won it during my sophomore year. Okay, so for my UC application, they required two descriptions, one for what you did to earn the award and the award requirements. Um, and the word limit was like a decent amount, so I kind of got lazy and like didn't want to add any more. So I only submitted, okay, so I only submitted six, um, five of which, four of which are the same as Common App. Okay, so first I submitted Educational Preparation Program, which was USC Boulevard Scholars, which 
the vlogs that also I'll link to channel, you can go watch if you want. Okay, so the Bobert Scholars Program was like a three week long program at University of Southern California and it helped us like prepare for college apps as well as like transition into senior year. But basically I wrote 98 hours per week, which I think is like 14 hours per day. Um, and it was for three weeks a year because it was only for three weeks. Okay, so for my second, third and fourth were the same from Common App. So it was Miss Dance of Dixie, um, the International Piano Competition, and then also the first place Science Olympiad award. Okay, fifth, I wrote AP Scholar with distinction. Um, I wrote, I had to have received an average of at least 3.5 on all of my AP exams taken and scored three or higher on five or more of these exams. Only about 10% of students earn AP Scholar with distinction by their graduation. And then fourth, I also put the first place Piano State competition. So that is it for the awards and honors that I listed. Okay, so for extracurriculars, which I think it's the portion that like helped boost my application the most. Um, so I'm just gonna like list some tips first and then my actual extracurriculars will be later in the video. Okay, so for seniors applying, I think they only allow like 150 characters on Common App. So it's kind of hard to like convey like everything you did for the clubs in those 150 characters. So you don't need to write in complete sentences. And instead of writing out like some of the words, you can include like symbols such as like and, like I forgot what they're called, but the and symbol or the at symbol instead of like at. Um, it should be fine to use numbers instead of typing it out. So for the roles, I actually got rid of the spaces like in between each leadership role, which I'll like write it up here, like how I formatted it. But there's no correct format to like format your like descriptions. So however it works out for you, like however you can like fit in all the stuff um, should be fine. One thing though, don't abbreviate the clubs. So like even if it's like a well-known club, like National Honor Society, Try not to like abbreviate it to like NHS, um, unless you already wrote it in like the clubs and then it's like in the description, then that's fine. And then for high schoolers not yet applying to colleges, try not to choose activities that you think colleges are looking for. Truly choose ones that you're interested in because then you're able to make more impact in those clubs. Okay, so on Common App, they give you 10 slots. So for number one, I put dance. Um, I kind of combine dance team and studio dance because they're both dance and I needed that extra space. So I wrote teacher assistant, ninth through 12th grade, co-captain, junior year, captain, senior year. I was on the competition team and dance team of my school and studio. So I danced an average of 18 hours a week. I've danced since three years old, like two and a half, three years old. And I've danced over 12 styles since then. So I would say dance has like been a big part of my life for the past like 15 years. So that's why my personal statement and like a lot of my other essays have been revolving around dance. It just shows that like I'm truly passionate for the activity and also like I've been determined enough to like stay with it over the 15 years. So try to choose activities that you can like stay with it long term and like even if you're like right there like try to like keep pushing until senior year. That's why it's like important to choose activities that you're truly interested in. Okay so for a second I talked about cultural bridge which was an internship that I did from 10th through 12th grade. Um, I was an executive director junior and senior year. And during my junior year, I founded the content creator team, which I wrote content team because didn't have enough space. Basically, Cultural Bridge is like where high schoolers in the US would tutor students internationally, mainly from China. So we would offer free online tutoring services to students who may lack the English education in China. So third, I wrote about piano and I didn't have any leadership positions because it was piano, so I wrote student. I wrote memorized pieces for competitions at regional, state, and international levels, have won multiple awards and superior ratings. Honestly, I didn't really know like what to write for the descriptions for piano because I basically just like took lessons and competed. Um, that's about it. Fourth, I wrote about a club that I founded in junior year. Um, it was Future Business Leaders of America. Um, I was the president junior and senior year. All right, so if you wanna start a club, don't just start it because you think colleges will prefer that over like, you know, just like leadership roles. Um, truly start it because you wanna make an impact. So as for FBLA, I started it because my school didn't offer like any business courses, like I said earlier, and there weren't any other business like clubs either. 
Um, so I was interested in this field and I felt that like a lot of other students are also interested in business, but there isn't that like resource given to them. So for this club, I not only like wanted to compete in the competitions, but I also like wanted to offer a resource to the students who are also interested in this field. And I felt like through this club, I was actually able to do that. Um, we gave like mini lessons on like different topics. And then we've also done a lot of different fundraisers that have helped like raise money for competitions, such as like a boba sale that earned over $1,000 and also like a Chinese food sale that also like did pretty well and earned over $1,000. But because of my impacts on this club, I was able to write a lot of my essays about it. And then also like during interviews, I was able to confidently talk about my impact in this club. So that's why it's important to like put your everything into some of these clubs instead of like just doing clubs that might look good to colleges. All right, so for my fifth activity, I talked about Health Occupation Students of America, which is known as HOSA. So I did that junior, no, I did that freshman to senior year and I was the co-president junior and senior year. Um, basically, it's similar to FBLA, except it's targeting towards students interested in the medical field. And I also just like provide oversight of club members to deliver content fundraise and coordinate volunteer activities targeting health career services. All right, sixth, I wrote about Dumbledore's Army, which was a Harry Potter club that I also co-founded freshman year and I was the president freshman to senior year. So I wrote, I created the social club for Harry Potter fans. We host topical events and fundraise in hope of going to Harry Potter theme park in Orlando. So we actually didn't get to go to Universal um, because, because I founded this in my freshman year, COVID hit, so that kind of changed everything. But we were still able to host like different activities for like Harry Potter fans. So like honestly, like these types of clubs like show uniqueness and not a lot of people will have like Harry Potter club in their coming out. All right, seventh, I wrote about a company that I co-owned slash co-founded. So I co-founded this company my junior year. So I wrote a small business I started, make gift boxes filled with organic environment friendly products while supporting small businesses made over thousand dollars. Um, pretty self-explanatory. It was a small business that I founded and we made gift boxes that have made over a thousand dollars. So seventh, I wrote about School Simplified, which was an internship that I did from sophomore to senior year. And I was the lead of content and I was also a member of the resource team. Um, basically, I wrote AP Psych notes and also geometry notes on the resource team. And then on the marketing team, I made social media content ranging from so I think I started with Facebook and then at one point it was like TikTok and Instagram and then I ended off on Instagram. All right, I think this is the ninth activity, but um, I wrote Mu Alpha Theta, which I was a member from freshman to senior year. And then my junior year, I was the historian. Um, basically we competed at math competitions and individual team and school events. And then my junior year, I was in charge of the Instagram for updates and announcements. All right, so for my early applications and my regular apps, I submitted two different activities. So for my early apps, for my 10th one, I wrote Key Club, which I was my school's mission ignition representative. So I was part of Key Club from freshman to senior year. And as the mission ignition representative, I correspond with high school reps for community service opportunities. I collect data from my high school classmates and relay it to the sponsor. Self-explanatory, but it was only like, a portion of the year, maybe like half, like the second semester. Uh, so it wasn't like a year long thing. And then for my regular apps, my 10th one, I wrote, I was the online manager and public relations of my parents' Chinese restaurant. Um, I worked from freshman to senior year. I was the online manager my senior year and public relations ninth through 12th. I wrote, created a new menu and menu board for inside the restaurant. I manage online platforms in parentheses with reviews pack and take orders and update the website. So for my UC app, I wrote all the activities from Common App and then two more. Okay, so first I wrote Academic Games, which I did from fifth through 12th grade. Um, basically it was like a school slash national competition that we did um, with like linguistics, math games, and like history games. I didn't really enjoy that much. So <laughs> I didn't write it on my Common App because I felt like I didn't really impact the club as much and I didn't really put my everything into this club. Um, I just wrote it on my UC because there was space for it. That's about it. <laughs> so next I wrote about a volunteering slash community service that I did. Um, basically, I volunteered from freshman to senior year at my local children's museum as the playologist and general volunteer. Um, so for this volunteer activity, it like ranges from like whenever I'm free to like busy. 
So usually it's like on Sundays from nine to five with like, I think a 30 minute break in between. It kind of like changed over the four years. I think sometimes it was like an hour, sometimes it was 30 minutes. So I kind of make sure the kids are like engaging in their activity while also staying safe. And then ask like open-ended questions to like start like developmental conversations. Um, and there were like a lot of different like parts to the museum. So I kind of talked about that as well. So I would say I had a pretty busy life throughout my high school years, so I didn't have a lot of time to like socialize and like hang out with friends. Um, basically like the more activities you do, the more sacrifices you'll have to make. Um, I've had to miss multiple birthday parties, events, or even like just watch a movie with friends because I had dance or like other club responsibilities. But obviously I still took the time to hang out with friends and family sometimes on weekends. Um, but I personally enjoyed this lifestyle. Um, it just, it's just up to you on like what you prefer. So here are some overall tips for applying to colleges. So my number one biggest tip is to not procrastinate. Um, I started my college apps in July. Well, I started my personal statement the beginning of freshman year. So like, I think August or September of junior year, I wanna say. Um, I, I don't know why, but I started my Common App, like the portal thing this summer going into my junior year. I think I was just bored. See, I don't really know. You don't have to do that. Um, just do that when it opens senior year. But start as early as you can so that number one, you can enjoy your breaks. Um, because I started my essays early, I got to enjoy Halloween, which is a day before early apps deadline. And then I also got to enjoy my winter break, which was also before regular deadlines. But starting your essays early can not only ensure that you get your application in on time, but it can help with the quality of the essays. And then also um, try to submit your essays at least a week before the deadline so that you can like prevent any like common app crashes or scholarship crashes, which actually happened to the Gates scholarship last year or this past year. But I would say try to have your essays done two weeks before the deadline so that you can also have some like break time before starting your regular decision or your regular apps. All right, number two, make sure you're staying organized because that can help a lot with like keeping track of like where you get accepted into, when the application deadlines are, and also like when the results come out. Um, for a lot of them, they don't give like actual like decision dates um, until like a week before or sometimes like they don't even say anything at all. So for me, I kind of like researched some people's like college decisions reactions video um, and like try to figure out a pattern for like when the school decisions come out. But also you can try searching it up and some of them will list it. Like for Ivy Day, like usually like a few months into your senior year, it should like come out like when Ivy Day is. Um, to help you stay organized, I also linked a Google spreadsheet in my descriptions down below. Um, make sure to read the welcome and roles page. I don't know if that's what it's called, but it gives you like the info on like what the Google spreadsheet provides. Basically that spreadsheet helped me a lot throughout my senior year help me stay organized and a lot of the stuff are like what I use so customize it however you want and make sure to make a copy of the spreadsheet before actually using it. So quite a few people have asked me on Instagram on tips on transitioning into high school and I mean this when I say it, it is your last year of high school, don't lock yourself at home doing college apps. Even though it is important to get your college apps done, um, that's one of the reasons why I say don't procrastinate so that you can still spend that time with your friends during senior year. Get to those events that you haven't been to from your freshman to junior year because your senior year is the last time you'll be able to experience these high school events. Really take the time to enjoy your senior year not only with your friends but also with your family um, because in the blink of an eye, you'll literally be moving to college, which I'm moving to college in like two weeks. So my last three tips are to be genuine in your essays, be easy on yourself, and try not to compare yourself to others. Because the common app season can be very brutal. Um, there's gonna be a lot of highs and lows. And especially during the, like the early decision, like release, like, what is it? College decisions period. Um, it can be very hard. Like I was deferred twice um, for my early apps. And my a lot of like my friends are getting into like their dream schools which I was happy for them, but it's still hard when you're getting deferred from your top schools, thinking that you have no chance at any other schools, which was not true. Um, so just be easy on yourself. For me personally, I deleted Instagram for two days during that time period, which helped. Um, just take the time for yourself when needed. And also it can get very overwhelming. So take breaks because I definitely did that during my senior year. 
there was this one week period where I was like so overwhelmed and stressed with like essays on like senior courses and all of that. Um, I literally texted my dance teacher. I was like, I'm too stressed and overwhelmed with like college apps. Um, is it okay to like take a week break from dance? Which helped a lot. You've just got to make those sacrifices when needed. Okay, so that is it for my video. I really hope it helped some of you. And if you have any more questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram, which I'll put right here and also in the description. Um, and also it would really help a lot if you could subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And I will be making more content about maybe college apps if y'all want, um, comment down below what you want. And then I'll also be vlogging some of my time at UPenn, which if you didn't know, that's where I'm going. So yeah, I'll be going to UPenn to study in the Wharton School. And I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys next time.